Congressmember Jim McDermott, I want to turn to another key issue of our day. It's the issue of health care. You're a doctor. I mean, in the lead up to the March 5th health care summit at the White House, uh, the, in the corporate media, there was almost no mention of single payer, which in some polls is the number one approach that Americans support, um, except a mention by those who slammed it. You're one of the advocates of single payer health care. So is Congressmember John Conyers. You've both both introduce bills. What are these bills? What is single payer? What are its chances? Basically, a single payer system, which is what every industrialized country in the world, except the United States, has adopted, is a system in which you guarantee a set of benefits for every citizen of the country, no matter how much money, where they live, what color they are, what ethnicity they are, whatever, everybody is entitled to the same generous benefit package. And that's true in France, and it's true in Germany, and it's true all over the place. The French, for half the money that we spend, are getting by the World Health Organization the best health care in the world. Now, the second thing that you have to have besides a generous benefit package is a single-payer system. And you can put the money together through the government, or there are a lot of different ways it's done in all the countries of the world. But when a patient goes into a hospital in Canada, they hand a card in for the national plan, and that's the end of it. And you are not threatened with bankruptcy in Canada, Britain, Germany, France, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Japan, Italy, Spain, none of these countries can a citizen be bankrupted by their illness. But it is the leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States because we have put the emphasis on individuals doing it. A single-payer system is a common good way of dealing with risk that none of us know when it's going to hit us. And I think that it's what this country needs, and, uh, but unfortunately we have a large health insurance industry that is fighting back tooth and nail to prevent that coming into existence. It's going to be a tough battle. This is not going to be something that's easily put together. I want to play what President Obama himself said about single payer before his presidential campaign. This is what he said back in June of 2003, before he was elected even to the U.S. Senate. I happen to be a proponent of a single-payer universal health care plan. I see no reason why the United States of America, the wealthiest country in the history of the world, spending 14 percent, 14 percent of its gross national product on health care cannot provide basic health insurance to everybody. And that's what Jim's talking about when he says everybody in, nobody out. A single payer health care plan, universal health care plan. Well, there you have it. That was uh, the state legislator, um, Barack Obama, speaking in 2003. Congressmember Jim McDermott, um, he has now said, at least as those in his administration have said, uh, Max Baucus, the leading senator on health care, along with uh, Senator Kennedy, have said that it's off the table. It took a lot of pressure to even get one single-payer advocate, and then finally it was two at the health care summit. Then it was John Conyers. Well, the, clearly the economic forces, the medical industrial complex in this country is bigger than the military industrial complex in this country. And people don't recognize that, but it is a huge industry that is resisting change. The, the medical industrial complex basically wants to keep the system the same, except for the fact they want to shift some of the costs off onto the government. And I, I think that the fight is going to be around a central issue when we get to the debate in the Congress, and that is whether, because the president has said, we're going to keep the private sh insurance industry as it is. If you're in it, fine, don't worry about it. You can stay right where you are. You're not going to be forced into anything, but we're going to give you a public option. And you can move to that public option. Now, the question will be, is that a good public option? Is it a 
less expensive public option because it should be less expensive than something provided by the insurance companies. And if it is, will people move into that ultimately and we will wind up with a basic system that's run through a, a public option? Like Medicare uh, for all? It could well be Medicare for all. That's what, uh, you know, Pete Stark and John Conyers have been talking about that for a long time. And that's one way to do it. There are a number of ways, but a, but a, a public option, some people say it should be the uh, Federal Employees Health Benefit Program, the program that I'm in as a federal employee. I put some money in, the government puts some money in, and that provides my health care benefits. And we ought to open that up to everybody in America. And new Let that work. A new uh, development now is that Senator Bernie Sanders has introduced the American Health Security Act of 2009 in the Senate. Um, is this your bill from the House? It's, it's exactly the same. Bernie called me up and said, Jim, do you mind if I put my bill, your bill in in the Senate? And I said, of course not, Bernie. It's good to have allies because Bernie's a good advocate. And uh, it, this issue has to be on the table right now. You, we spend in our health care dollar about 60 cents of every dollar is federal money in Medicare, Medicaid, veterans benefits, military benefits, Indian health, public employees. All this is already paid for in the public. So it's not as though we don't have a public option. We have just kept people out of that public option and kept them out there either on their own or in their, in their employment insurance. And uh, we got to open it up to let them into the federal system. Finally, you're going to be a columnist for now, the online Seattle PI, Post Intelligencer, which folded recently. Now, Seattle Times, the only major paper in Seattle. Um, you have said that newspapers should be bailed out like AIG was bailed out. Your position now? Well, here's my feeling. The thing that we lose with newspapers are investigative reporters. We don't need the, the editorial page where they tell us what they think or what they, who they think we should vote for. What they need are investigative reporters who go out and probe and find out what's going on. The blogosphere helps some. But the fact is that you need people who will go and stick their finger in the chest of people like me and say, why are you doing that? And make us say so that the people can make an informed choice. Democracy is based on an informed electorate. And as you lose those investigative reporters in newspapers, the people will be more and more in the dark and they'll be subject to uh, television uh, news coverage, which is a minute and a half at the most on any subject. And you do not get any in-depth view of what's going on. So we need newspapers from that standpoint. And I don't know how we get them, but... Uh, that's, uh, I, I think that we ought to be thinking very much about losing our democracy. Do you support this approach to have them, uh, uh, this new nonprofit option that has been introduced into Congress? Yeah, Ben Cardin from Maryland has put a bill in in the Senate. I looked at that. Uh, the Manchester Guardian is a nonprofit, and so is the Independent in Great Britain. So it is possible to run a newspaper as a, as a nonprofit. They would have to give up their editorializing about which candidates you should vote for. That kind of stuff would have to go. But otherwise, uh, I think it's a good option, and I would like to see some of these newspapers take that role. Unfortunately, the corporations who own them have a viewpoint that they want to go through the editorial page, and it'd be hard for them to give that up. So it's going to be a real test of whether newspapers are for getting people information or influencing public opinion. Congressman Jim McDermott, I want to thank you for being with us. Democratic Congressman from Washington State, also a doctor and now a columnist for the online Seattle PI. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. When we come back, we'll be joined by the British MP, George Galloway. Canada's not letting him into the country. I guess that's why he's here in New York. Stay with us.